Because we're still talking about scaffold, there's a few other things I would like to show you. One of which is the bottom navigator. So we can actually add some sort of a bottom navigator into our applications. Okay, I'm sure we instead of a scaffold here, there's a bar. I can come down here and say bottom navigation bar like this. You can see there it is, we can invoke it. So like this, and what it expects, well, it expects an actual bottom navigation bar. So I'm going to say bottom navigation bar, like this it gives us um, some sort of idea of what are the things that we can pass properties and so forth. Now items is plural, which means we need to pass more than one. What that usually means, it's just that we need to pass actually an array or a list of items, in this case, bottom navigation bar items. Okay, so if I do like that, notice that I'm ready to start putting together the, the actual button. Here I'm going to say bottom navigation item, navigation bar item, that's what we need. And for each one of these, we pass an icon. So I can say icon like this and say icons and go and invoke whatever icon that I want. All of these icons, of course, are the ones that we have access to. Let's use that one, doesn't matter really. And we have that one. Now notice if I were to go and run this, I will have an error because we can't just have one bottom navigation bar item there, okay? We have to have at least two. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it all in there. And in this case, I'm gonna pass something else, perhaps AC unit, whatever that is. There we go. <laughs> Save this and you notice, um, we have a problem here. I like to keep these errors because that's programming and things happen. And it says every item must have a non-null title, right? Because that means we actually have to pass a title. That's such going to be text that would say, and I'm going to say title text that I will say second like this. Let's save. Hopefully this time works. And right, just like that, we're given here these two navigation uh, bar items, bottom navigation bar items, just like that. Okay, all of that is for free. Obviously, I can add more than two. There should be a limit, I believe. Uh, let's see, I want to add account circle. We've done that. How about that one? You can say third. And you can see now we have three of them. And check this out. I am running Android. If I go and run iOS, let's run that. As it runs, we should be able to see the same application and hopefully see the same things that we see. Maybe a little bit different because these are different kind of operating systems. We should be able to see the same application running. It's running on iOS as well. We have the tapping working and even uh, the top here actions. And our app bar is also there. It's working. Let's tap this. You can see hello again is working as well, just like as it works on Android. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice indeed. The interesting thing as well is that we can pass because obviously buttons are to be tapped so we can invoke a certain event or in this case, listen to certain events. And if I do say comma, say on, look at this, we can actually pass also on tab, okay, a function. Now this on tab here, because as you see, we have more than one item, we have to pass an actual index of so that we know which item is being tapped. So I'm gonna pass int, I or just index like this. Just pass a debug again, print tapped item, and it's going to be index like this. So you see that each time we tap one, it's going to give the index of the item that we tapped. Okay, this is good. Also remember, if you're on Windows, you're not going to be able to have iOS, obviously. So let's check this out. Tap that one. It should say second. Oh, actually one, which is the second one because everything in an array starts by zero. That's the same thing. Let's type the third one. It's going to say number two. If I go to the first one, it should say zero. There we go. Now, the reason why the Android, if I tap on Android, even though it works, but it's not going to show anything because I'm actually running on iPhone at this point. Very good, but it would also work, obviously, on Android. In fact, I can just go ahead and stop all together and rerun this on Android again, you'll see the same behavior. So there we go. Let's tap second, should be one. First should be zero, okay? There we go, so it's working as intended. 
if you've done mobile development in native code, you notice that most of this stuff, you actually have to work a little bit harder to get it to work. But with Flutter, it's no longer necessary. And you get benefit of only having one source code and that would run on both iOS and Android. Perfect. Thank you again for being here. Go ahead and play around with this concept as usual, and I shall see you in the next videos.